in this lecture video we will be talking about legacy system management so what are legacy systems legacy systems are old outdated systems but they are still critical to the business these have to be extended and adapted to changing modern system software for example they could be old operating systems uh, which do not have patches or updates available uh, so they could be a security threat but they are crucial or critical to the operation of the business and hence are required and may not be uh, easily uh, you know scrapped uh, from the system so you have to somehow manage your modern operating systems and your modern system software to cooperate and work with crucial and critical legacy systems most organizations usually have a portfolio of legacy systems that they use with a limited budget for maintaining and upgrading these systems they have to decide how to get the best return on their investment this involves making a realistic assessment of the legacy systems and then deciding on the most appropriate strategy for evolving these systems now there are four options which are listed on the screen first one is to scrap the legacy system completely this option should be chosen when the system is not making an effective contribution to the business processes this most commonly occurs when the business processes have changed since the system was installed and are no longer reliant on the legacy system the second option would be leave the system unchanged and continue with regular maintenance this option should be chosen when the system is still required but is fairly stable and the system users make relatively few change requests the third option is to reengineer the system to improve its maintainability this option should be chosen when the system quality has been degraded by change and where a new change to the system is still being proposed this process may include developing new interface components so that the original system can work with other newer systems and the last option is replace all or part of the system with a new system this option should be chosen when factors such as new hardware mean that the old system cannot continue in operation or where off the shelf systems would allow the new system to be developed at a reasonable cost when you are assessing a legacy system you have to look at it from a business perspective and a technical perspective from a business perspective you have to decide whether or not the business really needs the legacy system from a technical perspective you have to assess the quality of the application software and the system's support software and hardware you can then use a combination of business value and the system quality to inform your decision on what to do with the legacy system in the figure on the slide you can see that there are four clusters of system first one is low quality and low business value this is on this part of the screen this one this is the first sector or the first uh, cluster keeping these systems in operation will be expensive and the rate of the return to the business will be fairly small these type of systems should be scrapped that is systems which are of low quality and which return low business values should be scrapped the second one is low quality but high business value this this cluster these systems are making an important business contribution so you cannot scrap them however their low quality means that it is expensive to maintain them these system should be reengineered to improve their quality they may be replaced if there is a suitable off the shelf system the third cluster is high quality and low business value that is this cluster these are the systems that don't contribute much to the business or don't give you much returns but which may not be very expensive to maintain because they have high quality software it is not worth replacing these systems so normal system maintenance may be continued the last cluster is high business value and high quality 
These systems have to be kept in operation. However, their high quality means that you don't have to invest in transforming or maintaining the systems or replacing them. Normal system maintenance should be continued. To assess the business value of a system, you have to identify system stakeholders, such as end users of the system and their managers, and ask them a series of questions about the system. The four basic issues that you have to discuss are depicted on this slide here. Firstly, the use of the system. If the systems are only used occasionally or by a small number of people, they may have a low business value. Second, the business processes that are supported. When a system is introduced, business processes are designed to exploit the system's capabilities. If the system is inflexible, changing the business processes may be impossible. Third, the system dependability. System dependability is not only a technical problem, but also a business problem. If the system is not dependable and the problems directly affect the business customers, or mean that people in the business are diverted from other tasks to solve these problems, the system has a low business value. And last question is the system output. The key issue here is the importance of the system outputs to the successful functioning of the business. If the business depends on the outputs, then the system has high business value. Conversely, if the outputs can be easily generated in some other way, then the business value may be low. To assess a software system from a technical perspective, you need to consider both the application system and the environment in which the system operates. The environment includes hardware and all the associated support software that are required to maintain the system. The environment is important because many system changes result from changes to the environment in which the system operates. So here on the slide, you can go through this. These are a few factors used in assessing the environment. Supplier stability, that is, is the supplier for the system still in existence? Failure rate, that is, does the hardware have a high rate of reported failures? Age, how old is the hardware or software? Performance, is the system performing adequately? Support requirements, what local support is required by the hardware and software? Maintenance costs, what are the costs of hardware and software maintenance, licenses, and so on. Interoperability, what are the problems with interfaces? Can the system easily interface and interact with other modern systems? Can compilers, for example, be used with the current versions of the OS, and so on. To assess the technical quality of an application system, you have to assess a range of factors and these factors are presented on the screen now. Understandability, that is, how difficult it is to understand the source code of the system. Documentation, is the system completely documented? Is the documentation up to date? Is it consistent and easily readable? Data, is there an explicit data model for the system? Performance, is the performance of the application adequate? Programming languages, are modern compilers and other tools available for the system? Configuration management, are all versions of the parts of the system managed by a configuration management system? That is, suppose you have upgraded the code. Suppose you have, you know, given one version of your code and then you have upgraded the code to another version, then have you maintained this has two different versions? So that by chance, if the upgraded version has any bugs or any defects, you can roll back to the previous version. So that is nothing but configuration management. Test data. Do you have a set of test data for which using which you have tested the system? Is a record of test data and test cases maintained? Personnel skills. Are there people available who have skills to maintain the application software? Are there people available with experience of using the system? and so on. You may also collect data that will help you judge the quality of the system. Data that may be useful in quality assessment includes the number of system change requests. System changes usually corrupt the system structure or degrade them. So the higher this accumulated value, the lower will be the quality of the system. 
second factor would be the number of user interfaces. This is an important factor in forms-based system where each form is considered to be a separate user interface. More the interfaces, the more likely that there are inconsistencies and redundancies in the interfaces. The third factor would be the volume of data used by the system. The higher the volume of data, the more likely that there, there will be data inconsistencies that will reduce the system quality. Ideally, the objective assessment should be used to inform decisions about what to do with the legacy system. However, in many cases, decisions are not really objective, but are based on organizational and political consideration. For example, if two businesses merge, then the most politically powerful uh, partner will have a major say as to whether you have to keep the legacy system, maintain it, upgrade it, or scrap it. So this is about legacy system management. We learned what are legacy systems. We learned what are the different options available when you have to work with the legacy systems. We learned how to assess the environment of the system. We learned how to assess the technicality of the or the software run by the legacy system. We also learned how to assess the data and how to use data in assessing the quality of the system.